So with the latest update to Adobe Muse, we've gained the ability to leverage opacity as a scroll effect, which means we can now be scrolling down the page and have something fade in or, or even fade out if you want to. Uh, now with that, it, it kind of got my wheels turning uh, just design-wise, and I was thinking, man, it would be cool if something could just fade in or if something could be triggered to fade in without having to scroll or without having to scroll continuously. Uh, so I started playing around with uh, some of the compositions and trying a combination of things to see if it was possible within Muse. And it turns out it's actually pretty darn easy to do in Muse. And I'm going to show you an example of what I've done here, and then I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Let me preview this in Safari. So the hand comes up, resources on the go appears, learn more fades in, and then museresources.com comes up. Now you might recognize this down here. This is actually a downloadable uh, composition that I created and put on museresources.com. Uh, so if you guys have downloaded this, it might look familiar to you. Uh, essentially, all I've done here is I've used one of the options when creating a composition uh, that allows you to hide the composition until uh, the interval at which the slides change, if that makes any sense. It'll, it'll make more sense in a moment. Uh, so I'm going to close this and I'm going to show you real quick just what behind the scenes looks like. Uh, this is a composition. This is essentially a slideshow, uh, but it, it's not the slideshow composition. It's just the blank composition. You do get slightly different options when you make a blank composition versus a blank slideshow uh, because a composition is designed to hold graphic elements. Uh, not just photographs like a slideshow is. Uh, but with this selected, I can click over here, and this is really the important thing. Uh, we're hiding all initially. That is the option that makes this possible. So I've got a composition here that only has one slide to it. Uh, I don't, I'm not transitioning from one thing to another thing to another thing. Uh, so there's just one slide, and they are all hidden initially. Uh, all one of my slides are hidden initially. Uh, and then I have it autoplay and I have it come in after 0.8 seconds and then it transitions over the course of 0.8 seconds. So let me build this from scratch so you guys can see. So here I've got my static uh, page laid out and if I go and preview it uh, you can see that nothing really happens. Nothing fades in, nothing appears uh, except I have my little my little uh, what do you call it, composition running down here with the text changing. Uh, and again, if you guys want to take this, it is from museresources.com and it's on the MooLibs page because it's a downloadable Muse library. Uh, but nothing's animating. The hand's not coming up. Learn more isn't fading in. Uh, this is just designed as a static design. Uh, so what I can do now to make it animate is I can go over here to the widgets library. I can go to compositions and I want to find the blank composition here and I want to drag it onto my slide. Now, what I have does not look very useful to me uh, because, I mean, it, it's kind of set up like a slideshow, and that's not what I want to do. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to delete these extra triggers because, like I said, this is a slideshow uh, of, of one slide. It's going to be just the hand by itself in this composition. Uh, and then the next thing is this trigger. Um, I don't really need the trigger at all. It's going to happen automatically. So I'm going to go up here where it says uh, trigger active, and I'm going to delete the active state for it. And I'm also going to delete the rollover state for it, which in turn gets rid of the mouse down state. And then the normal state, I'm actually going to go and get rid of the fill. I'm going to make it transparent. And I'm going to get rid of the stroke so there's no line around it. So now this trigger is completely invisible. It still exists. You actually can't get rid of it. But at least it's no longer visible. Uh, and then the target area, the large area over here where the content's going to go, um, I'm going to shrink that down real quick because I don't need it to be so huge. I'm going to put it down here, and the trigger is kind of hard to keep track of because it's invisible now. Uh, and this is about to become invisible as well. So the target area, and it doesn't matter how big it is right now because um, I haven't put anything inside of it. And fortunately, it will scale to, uh, to fit the, the content. So even though it's smaller than the hand holding the iPhone, uh, it's, going to, it's going to fit around it automatically so I can make it small. It's easier to work with if you make it smaller than the object that's going to go inside it so that way it scales around it tightly so you don't have to do that manually. Alright so now I've got my target area, I got my trigger, but the target area is still filled with gray and it has a stroke around it so I'm going to do the same thing I did with the trigger and I'm going to make the target transparent and I'm going to make the target have no stroke around it. So now I've got a single trigger, a single target area, 
uh, that single trigger and single target area are blank, therefore, uh, well, transparent, therefore invisible. And what I can do now, if I click away, I can move the entire composition on top of the hand holding the iPhone, and I can put my cursor on top of the hand holding the iPhone next to the composition and just drag it over slightly so that red box shows up. And now I've dropped it into the composition. Now what that just did is it turned this entire thing into that composition and I can scoot it back into position and it now has my little blue uh, disclosure triangle sticking out the end, uh, which I can click on and I can now play with my options here. So position stacked, that's what I want. Uh, show target on click, that's going to be irrelevant because we're not actually going to use the trigger. And then hide target none, that is also irrelevant because it's going to show up and it's going to stay on the screen. Uh, transition, however, transition's up to you. Fading means it'll fade in. Horizontal means it'll slide in from right to left, which unfortunately you can't change. And vertical means it'll slide in from bottom to top. Unfortunately, you can't change that either. It won't go from top to bottom. So I'm going to choose vertical because I want the hand to come up from the bottom. And using that, I get to decide how quickly or how slowly by doing the transition speed. So I did 0.8, so that way the hand doesn't move too fast. And then I need it to autoplay. Since the trigger's invisible, I need it to play on its own. So yes, I want to autoplay. And then this becomes the delay for how long until this object shows up. So if you want one thing to show up, and then a second later, another thing to show up, and then a second later, another thing to show up, uh, you could do one second for the first one, or zero seconds for the first one, and then add a second for each additional one, or half a second, depending on how you want to pace it. But this is how long from the moment the page loads until the moment that this animation begins. So I'm going to make it just one second. So that way, after a one second delay, the hand slides up. Now the really important part is hide all initially. I need everything to be hidden. Uh, I, essentially, I need the slides of this composition to be hidden. So that way, the first one can appear rather than already being on the screen. Uh, and then I don't want to enable swipe because... Uh, we're not going to interact with this object. It's going to be completely automatic. So stacked, on click, none, vertical, and then uh, I'll keep this on the screen for a couple more seconds so you guys can look at it. Uh, but essentially with this combination of things, we are creating the hand moving up using the vertical. We are having it do so over the course of 0.8 seconds, and we're having it do so after a delay of one second. Uh, and hide all initially is really the most important part. Uh, so that way you can see here hide all targets on initial page load so that way we don't already see the hand holding the iPhone when the page loads. So let's preview this and see what it looks like. There we have it. That easy. Kind of a long delay before the hand appears, but who knows, maybe you're trying to get someone to read something before the hand appears and then they'll be all excited when the hand appears like, whoa, I didn't expect that to happen, but uh, you can set that interval to whatever you want. And then this little guy here, uh, here's another one. I mean, I might want to learn more to fade in. So uh, raise your hand if you thought it was kind of a pain in the neck to add the composition and then make all the parts of it blank and delete the extra triggers and make it smaller. I think that's a pain in the neck. So what I have done for you guys is I have added to museresources.com on the Moo Libs page. I have added a downloadable blank auto fader composition. So what that'll do is when you download and install that, and go to your library, this is assuming you have Muse 7.0, you'll have blank auto fader and you'll be able to drop it onto your page and then you can drop the object into the box and suddenly this is a composition that is already set to auto fade, it's already set to hide all initially, so if I preview it, it's already doing its thing, it's already fading in and you guys can just modify the settings as you see fit. So that'll save you uh, really all of the time involved in this tutorial. The tutorial will of course give you a better understanding of how this works and how to create it from scratch. Uh, but head over to museresources.com and download this so you don't have to go through all of the steps every time. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please subscribe if you haven't already. I will have more cool stuff coming soon.